Let's have some muted fun. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution R Set Play, and today I am going to be trying out the Graffitant Paint Pan Set by Derwin. I've been wanting to try this set forever. As some of you may know, I have already reviewed their Graffitant pencils on my channel. I loved these pencils. They were so much fun. And I had the 24 set of the pencils, but I have the 12 set in pans. And this is just a fun little travel set. Derwent has been putting out a lot of paint pan sets lately. They've come out with some really cool ones. They have a couple sets for the Ink Tense line, and then they have this, and they have a few others that I want to look into. But I will link their website in the description below so you can see more. Let's get this out of the package. Get this open. It comes with a swatch card, and I believe they're all in the same order as the swatch. The plastic. There we go. And as I mentioned, this is the 12 set. Comes the one with the water brush. I may have mentioned these in a previous art haul video. I had bought these a while back on Blick and then they were on back order for a long time and then they finally came and I've had them forever and I'm just finally getting the chance to play with them. But I'm super excited about it and I think it's going to be fun to get back to these muted colors. So let's take a look at the colors that they have in the set. Autumn Brown, Russet, Meadow, Green Gray, Slate Green, Ocean Blue, Steel Blue, Dark Indigo, Aubergine, I never know how to say that word, but I'm told it means eggplant, Juniper, Port, and Graphite Gray. Oh, they're just so pretty. I do think they look a little bit muted, more muted on here. This kind of looks like a nice like rice paper than they do in my swatches for my pencils. I'm not going to bother to swatch these because... I kind of have a pretty good idea of what the colors look like from here. I mean, they might be a little bit different than the pencils, but we'll see. We're going to figure that out today. And I'm super excited about this. There are light fast ratings on these available online. The light fast ratings on these differ a little bit than the light fast ratings on here. I thought that was kind of interesting. And I believe the pencils have better light fast ratings. If I remember right, I will link the color charts below from the, Dur the Derwent website so that you can see that for yourself. But for the most part, they're all supposed to be pretty light fast. Again, I don't know how they've done the testing on these. I've been told in the past that Derwent hasn't tested any of their water soluble pencils after being wetted down as far as light fastness goes. But I don't know how they could bother to test the pans without wetting them down. So I'm honestly not sure. However, there are light fast ratings. And generally speaking, if a pigment is light fast, it's going to continue to stay light fast if it's washed down. However, if it's something that's prone to fading to begin with, it will fade a little faster if it's washed down. At least that's that's my general understanding of it. And so for the most part, from the ratings that I looked at and wrote down online, the only ones that are not really acceptable because they go by the blue wool rating they mention that on their ratings, anything six and above is good for 100 years. And there's only a couple that are below a six, and that is the Russet. So this one, and that one rates as a four. And then the other one is Port, which is as a five. And I believe this one is like a six, seven in their pencil or something like that, if I remember right. It's, I looked at it a little bit ago, but don't quote me on it. Again, I'll link that in the description. So if light fastness is important to you, they do have light fast ratings on these. And you can look at them and see what you like. For this piece, I am going to try to do mostly the, like, the foundation of the piece, mostly with the pans. I am concerned as to whether or not I'll be able to get it dark enough. Again, I haven't swatched these, so I just, I'm hoping I'll be able to get my full value range without having to bring the pencils in. I may bring the pencils in on top for detail. I really got this so that I could use them with my pencils and so that I could bring these um, on my travels and stuff because it is a good little travel set. So I really like that nice sturdy plastic. It feels like it's in good 
you know, good condition. Obviously, I bought it brand new. Areas for mixing, 12 pans, comes with the water brush and the sponge. And I think the pans are removable. I have to be careful because I don't want to dump them. But I think they're removable. I will link their listing at Blick too. I'm not sure, honestly, if they're available open stock. I'll have to look that up and then maybe I'll mention it in my voiceover a little bit later in the video. Because I didn't really look into that. I know the pencils are available open stock. I'm not sure if the pans are or not, but hopefully, because they do seem to be removable. But okay, I think what I want to do is a nice picture of dead leaves, because who doesn't <laughs> who doesn't like dead leaves in the spring? Because that makes sense. It's not fall time, but you know what? I think that that's going to be the best bang for my buck as far as using these beautiful muted colors. I have a reference photo that I sketched a, from a while back that I took even longer ago. And I think that this will be a great medium to do that reference photo with. So we will see how that goes. I am going to put on some Golden Girls and I will be speeding this project up and doing a voiceover. And I will talk all about my experience with these. So stay tuned. Okay, so starting with my little project now. The first thing that I want to mention is I looked at the Blick website and these are available open stock. I thought that they were, but I couldn't quite remember because it had been so long since I ordered. So I looked back into it. They are available open stock. So if you do decide to try these and you fall in love and you use up a color, you can replace it. So that's really, really exciting. And of course, their pencils are available open stock as well. So let's look at these beautiful colors. They are so muted and they granulate so well. Because it is graphite, it settles a little bit differently and it just automa like automatically makes a nice natural granulation. It's a little bit heavier and so the paint is going to stay put and it's not going to run as easily as other water media. So if I were to like drop this into a wet spot on the paper, it's basically, it's going to stay put, which allows for a little bit more control. I really, really enjoyed that aspect of it. And there's just something so beautiful about muted colors every once in a while. Like, it's just a nice change from really, really bright colors. And I think that that lends itself wonderfully to natural subjects like this. The granulation, the muted color tone, it's perfect for things like rocks and dead leaves and landscapes, which I actually did a landscape, an old like barn landscape with the pencils, and I really enjoyed that a lot. I'll show that here so that you can kind of see what I did with the pencils. And they really just automatically give like this nice nostalgic feeling because they're so muted. But you can still get a certain amount of vibrancy as well. Such a unique medium. Something else that I noticed was that you could actually, like, you can see the shininess on the pans themselves, but once they're really, really washed out, and I noticed this with the pencils as well, you're not getting as much of the graphite sheen. And I'll show you that in my first impressions when I show you at the end when I first finish the piece, I kind of show you the, the sheen that can be seen. And basically, the only places that you see graphite sheen is in places that it's not completely washed out. But I started with the negative shapes in between the leaves first. And then I started moving into the positive shapes. And one of the things that I should have remembered more is doing light to dark, because obviously that's how it is with with any sort of water media, but when I jumped right in, some of the pans like had like high saturation. So you'll see areas that I went darker before I meant to. I was trying to just kind of get the feel of it, especially working with the water brush. And let's talk a little bit about this water brush, shall we? It is fantastic. Really, really versatile. I was able to get nice fine lines and I was super excited about that. And basically all a water brush is, is it's just a hollow brush where you can put water in it. And then when you're working with water media, the brush itself wets the water media for you. So you'll actually see me switch back and forth between my water brush where I wanted a lot more water and doing like light layers. And then you'll also see me come in with other brushes where I could have a little bit more control over how much water I was using and where I could get kind of darker lines and things like that. So obviously, the more water you use, 
the lighter the washes are going to be, the less water you use, the darker the pigment is going to be. And so I don't work with water brushes very often. I love them. I think they're great for being on the go, very convenient, but I'm not as controlled with a water brush just because I'm not as used to working with it. So you'll see me bring in other brushes as well. And the other brushes I use are just cheap generic brushes like Taclon brushes that I bought off of Amazon, kind of no name things. So I don't really remember the brand that they are, but I don't, I'm not very picky about my brushes typically as long as the bristles aren't falling out and it's Taclon, I'm usually pretty happy with it. Look at that. Oh, it's so much fun to watch. And the cool thing is, is there's something about it that even though it combines watercolor with graphite, like... It almost just looks like a regular drawing, even though I used a brush for the majority of this. And I think, I don't know, there's just something really neat about that. I love using unique mediums like this. Something else that I found that I really, really enjoyed is the fact that these lift pretty well. I was able to lift out any mistakes I made pretty easily, which is unusual for water-soluble graphite. I find when I work with regular water-soluble graphite, it's much harder to lift than regular watercolor is. Now, of course, certain colors are going to lift more easily than others. That's how it is in any type of water media because some things stain more easily, but, you know, it, it lifted really well. Also, I did a little bit of splatter action there. It's kind of hard to see, but I was able to splatter these as well. So that was kind of fun. I tried to use a bunch of different methods that I would normally use in watercolor just to try these out. And they worked really well. Like I said, they're not as flowy because they're a little bit more heavy because of the graphite in them. But it's also really cool when I scan this in, I have to say, it scans differently than it looks on the image. Like the scan brings out vibrancy. It's really weird. The scan is much more vibrant. I'll kind of show that here. But, and of course my lighting isn't great when I'm filming. I apologize for that. I was using natural lighting. I'm in my living room and I was going by the light that was coming in the window. So sometimes you'll see it's a little warmer. Sometimes it's a little bit cooler. But when I scanned this in, it was really neat because when I did a close up of it, you could kind of see granulating like little pieces of graphite sitting on the paper. And it's really neat. I'll see if I can get a close up of that so I can show you the texture on the paper, like really up close. It's just it's super neat looking. Almost gravelly looking. So I'm going through and a lot of the colors that I'm using, I found that the meadow worked the best for anything that I wanted it to look kind of yellow. And then I would bring in my green gray and my slate green. So like that kind of yellowy green leaf that's all the way to the edge and the one that's underneath. And of course, the main leaf, I used a lot of that meadow to kind of get the the yellow look, even though it really is actually more of an olive green. But compared to some of the other colors around, it worked really well as a makeshift yellow. And I used a lot of the autumn brown as well because that for the redder tones because obviously I needed a nice red and that one was the more light fast of the two colors in this that lean towards red. And I also used a lot of the juniper and a lot of the dark indigo in this to get those kind of purpley dead leaves. Definitely could get a range of colors and I was able to mix on the palette pretty easily. So if I needed something to be more of like a yellow green, I could mix my green gray and my meadow together and get more of a, a yellowy green. If I wanted more of a bluish green, I could use my slate green. And then obviously I could mix in ocean blue. So I was able to mix colors really, really well. One thing that I kind of wish that they had in this set is their midnight black. They have that in the pencil, which I come in with later to get some details. I would have liked them to have one color that's much darker. Their steel blue was pretty dark and that's what I use the most in my dark areas. But I found that coming in with the Midnight Black later on with a pencil definitely helped make things pop a little bit more easily and helped me to darken up those shadows. But the shadows were pretty dark anyway, so I was actually pretty happy with that. And of course, if I really wanted white, I would just lift the paper or I would use a masking fluid. I didn't end up using masking fluid. I didn't need to, but I would have if I had anything that really needed a white highlight. 
All those details. Oh, it was so much fun. And there are other artists that use these online as well. I know Lindsay from The Frugal Crafter. She has a channel. Um, you've probably seen her. If you're watching me, you've seen her because she's a much bigger YouTuber. She's used these on her channel, I think maybe even recently, unless that was an old video that popped up in my feed. But there's a, there's a few out there that have used these that have more experience with them than I do. This is only my second time using the Graphitint line, and this is my first time using the pans. And so it was all a very new experience for me. I definitely feel like I picked the right subject. These pen, the pencils, so I did most of this using the pans, but the pencils glide right over the washed out pans so smooth, like slick as butter. They are great to use together, which obviously they should be. They're the same line, but sometimes it doesn't match up. This definitely matched up. I was able to wash the pencil out after, even on top. I just had to be careful not to use too much water if I was coming on top to blend out a new layer because obviously it could lift the layers below. So that was something that I had to keep in mind when working with this. But they do layer well. The pans layered well on top of the pans. The pencils laid well over the pans as well. And so I was very, very happy with that because I want to be able to use these together. Especially for areas that, you know, like the pan is only a 12 set. I have the 24 set of pencils. So it was important to me for to be able to use these together. It was really, really nice to have the pans because... It's so much quicker than just using plain pencils to get all of the down. It laid down much quicker that way. And this only took me maybe an hour and a half. I don't know, maybe a little longer. I took my time with it, but it might have even been shorter. It, it's a quick medium to work with. But all in all, I really, really enjoyed this. I'm definitely going to use these more, especially when I'm out and about. And... I highly recommend them for anybody who wants to try something different. Okay, here is my final piece with the tape taken off. And obviously I wrote the details on the bottom. I'm really pleased with how this came out. It does have a sheen. So it's not as dark as I would like just because it has that graphite sheen. So obviously, I mean, that's part of a graphite thing. But it's not overly shiny you can kind of see it when I put it towards the light and I think that is mostly in places where I put some of the pencils and so I didn't wash it out as much the parts that are just if you look in here the parts that are just the pans are not as shiny so when it's washed out really well and I found the same thing with the pencils when they're really really extremely washed out you lose that graphite sheen but they layered well the pans layered well on top of themselves, and I did use mostly pans for the first part of it, and then I came in with details for the last part with pencils because I wanted to see how the pencils layered over it, as I mentioned in my voiceover when you saw me doing that. And I was able to get a lot of layers with the pans themselves first. I probably could have done this whole thing with just the pans, but I wanted to see how how they work together. So I did find obviously work light to dark, typical of a watercolor like medium and thinner layers on bottom, thicker layers on top. So that way there you're not lifting layers below and it worked just fine as far as layering with just the pans go. When I came over on top with the pencils, the pencils glided over it perfectly. It didn't fill the tooth. The pans didn't fill the tooth too much. This is a cold pressed watercolor paper, not the most expensive. But yeah, I think all in all, this was a lot of fun. I love the two products together, which is what I was hoping for. But I also think that this is going to be a great pan set to bring out on a day trip to the coast or wherever when me and my husband go out just for a fun travel set or even to work in my own garden this summer when the vegetable garden is growing. I think it's going to be fun when I want to work with some muted colors just for a change, just for a different color scheme. This is my first piece I've done since I did my or since I finished my candy piece and that was a lot of bright, bright colors. And so this was just a nice change and I love the way it looked and definitely think that the leaves were a great subject for this. Okay, so I would recommend these if you're somebody who wants to try something a little different, if you are somebody who is trans transitioning from 
graphite into color and so you're used to the working properties of graphite but you're not quite used to color yet this could be a fun transition or if you just want to play around with some muted colors a lot a lot of fun thank you so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed this and i will see you next week you have a great day bye